Our worship continues this morning with a time together in this building, celebrating and remembering together uh, the gifts that God has given us and the ministry that has been able to happen in this place. A little feedback. Turns out my headset mic that's connected to those speakers cannot be heard in this room. So here we are. Uh, we're going to begin with an opening prayer. So will you join me in prayer? Loving Lord, we give you thanks this day for your work, for your love, and for the ways that you continue to be present with us. We ask that you move your spirit within us and through us so that we might remember your works and wonders and testify to what you are doing. Keep us mindful that as we work in this building, it is us who are your temple. And so fill us with your spirit that it might be housed within us this and every day. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Amen. Good morning, everyone. It is great to see so many people here for our 20th anniversary of this fellowship. What'd you say? Approach. Approach. <laughs> um, so many were involved in this process many years ago, and we're thankful for their work. God has been good to us through his love and guidance. We enjoy all this building means to us. Some are no longer with us, but we remember them and celebrate them. Fellowship Hall created new possibilities for our church and community. We could expand our Sunday school, start a man of ministry, have social gatherings, and allow certain other groups to come in and do God's work here. The building was truly a work of love for all of us and for our children, and will be used for many years to come. Now, we're going to show a video in just a few moments. I want to remind you of the table up there by the doors is our memory table. We've got pictures from many years ago and some plaques up there, and our contribution ladder uh, that we had back then to try to raise the money. So please take a look at that before you leave today. Uh, the video I did several weeks ago and interviewed four people that were involved uh, in the building and planning process. So we're going to show that it's about a 35-minute video, uh, and then after that, I have a few other remarks, and then I promise we will be there. <laughs> As part of our 20th year celebration, the Stewardship Committee wanted to look back to the beginning of the planning process for our Fellowship Hall. We asked Gary Lee, William Bernardo, Deanne Cockrell, and Gay Wallace, who were part of the many discussions, to be interviewed. We have several questions for each person to understand how they were involved and their thoughts about the process and their memories about that time. So you were a minister in this church for how long before this project started? I was a minister from 1990, I came in 1990, January of 90. Okay. And this project really got, it, it got talked about for two or three years. Mm -hmm. And then uh, it really got started, I would say, in 98 when they came okay. together and did the, you know, committed to the fundraising right. and so forth. Okay. So first question we have is, uh, we assume that you were the day-to-day -day contacts since you were across the street. Was it a daily visit for you to be the watchdog for the process? Uh, and by the way, we found <laughs> a hat uh, that uh, has your name on it, so we know that you were involved oh, yeah. in the project. Oh, yeah. We didn't see you digging many holes. No, no, I could, I could wear the hat, that's about <laughs> okay. it. No, um, you know, the, um, the, the property committee was certainly involved, uh, other people in the church. I was more of, on the day-to-day -day basis. I was I was more like that switchboard operator that mm -hmm. when they when they would call in and you would plug them into the right phone. Yeah. I was the person who, if they needed to get a hold of somebody right quick or something like that, a lot of times they'd, they'd call over to the church and yeah. I would do that. I did get to see the process on a daily basis though, and it was it was an amazing process to watch them because so much of the work was done uh, during the winter season. 
mm-hmm. and they had, as they were doing the brickwork, they had these giant canvas or, or, or plastic mm-hmm. covering all over the building and from top okay. to bottom and they were working inside of that. Of course, that was to keep it heated. So you really couldn't see mm-hmm. a lot of the stuff that was going on okay. during the day. Yeah. And then when they, when they finally dropped that canvas, it was amazing. What do you remember about the culture of the church at that time? This was a big project for us, and we had already been here uh, 15 years probably. Right. So it was, uh, did you think the church was growing at that time and the plan was the right thing to do? I, okay. I, I can spend as much time on this question as you want to spend. Okay. Um, Tom, as you know, when I first got to the church, uh, it was un- it was going through a pretty rough time, uh, and the I think the psyche of the congregation uh, was certainly bruised. And at one time, early on in my ministry, I'd say ninety one, ninety two, we even did a survey and uh, had an assessment done of the buildings and mm-hmm. and thought about moving. And in fact, we we made a tentative decision to move if possible. Right. Uh, that was not one that was, was far from a unanimous decision. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the reality was we couldn't move, we couldn't afford to move, we, mm-hmm. we had too much invested in this, in this property. Mm-hmm. And so in hindsight, it was really, really good that we didn't try to. I think many of us felt at that time, because we had already been here, thought this is the place we need to be. It would be nice to have a brand new church somewhere, but I thought, can we really afford to do that? Right. Uh, and I think people knew that, but I think, the, like I said, the psyche of the church was mm-hmm. was bruised. And uh, some people felt, well, you know, maybe it's like a new suit of clothes. Maybe mm-hmm. we'll feel better if, we're in a, if yeah. we start over. Right. But we we, did, we didn't move, and that was a good thing. Uh, we had become a congregation at that time probably of about 160 mm-hmm. active members. We, we had a lot more on the roll, but we had fallen down quite a bit. Yeah. And so we, we stayed here, and we were in the, in, in the older building, in the older uh, Sunday School Room building, and of course over there we had uh, just a, a, you know, a few Sunday School Rooms, and we did well. Uh, the what is now the choir room was a fellowship hall mm-hmm. and it was amazing how we worked through that thing in that sure. little kitchen over there but as as time went on we we really began to turn around uh, mm-hmm. we we worked real hard to establish sort of a, a family feel for the church uh, come be a part of our family we want to be a part of yours we want you to be a part of ours kind of thing and and that was and that extended beyond just Sunday morning worship. Mm-hmm. It was, let us minister to each other. Mm-hmm. And we grew. And by 1998, we didn't start, or in 96, 97, we didn't start the conversation of, do we build a new building? What, how, what do we do? We were forced to deal with some really mm-hmm. great problems right. of being overcrowded. We were literally uh, sitting on our fists and leaning on our thumbs. In, in that old building mm-hmm. and so we were forced into looking at uh, a new fellowship hall a new Sunday school building and as we did that uh, the uh, the enthusiasm began to grow mm-hmm. the um, congregation rallied around that because we had this property this property was had been bought Years and years ago, yeah. so we we didn't have to buy mm-hmm. property. We had this little piece of land that we're on, and so they uh, voted to move forward. And we brought in the architects, and we used up every square inch in designing the building, mm-hmm. every square inch of the land that we owned sure. to design mm-hmm. the building. And we started the the fundraising process. The thing that the 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 church was all for it. I mean, it was it was a situation where. Um, Everybody just about said that this is what we need to do. Yeah. Let's do that. We yeah. we have to do this, and so it be, it was a very successful fundraising campaign. Uh, one of the things that um, uh, was interesting about the congregation and its its um, attitude, though, was we want this building really really badly, mm-hmm. but we don't want to build it until our fundraising shows fruit. Right. And so the 
people that were guiding all of that, and I hope you have somebody to come talk about all of this part of it mm -hmm. as well, uh, they decided we will not start building until we have uh, over half, I think it was, mm -hmm. of yeah. our funds collected. Not, not pledged, but collected. And uh, so that's what happened. Mm -hmm. So the, I think the, the, the congregation was extremely enthusiastic. Mm -hmm. uh, they saw this sort of, I think, uh, referring back to the original issues, I think they saw this as a new birth for the church. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I think that's really kind of what happened. One of the driving forces was as they made that decision to let's okay let's truly invest here let's let's roll our sleeves up mm -hmm. go to work and invest here but we are a downtown presence and if we leave here and move out in say to a subdivision or you know sure. or in, mm -hmm. in a more rural, not rural setting but you know a, a more open right, setting right. that we'll lose that ability and mm -hmm. I think it, when you look back on that, this church has been so involved mm -hmm. uh, from a ministry standpoint, mm -hmm. uh, reaching out into the community to be involved in things like the Helping Hand, obviously, Manna Ministry. Mm -hmm. And the I remember the first Manna week or two, we couldn't get anybody to come. <laughs> 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 I mean, uh, John Bossom at, at, at the time, I remember he went out one day and recruited people to come, <laughs> come, to come in and come in <laughs> eat. Uh, and, and it took a while, Well, it, and for a couple of things. One, first of all, people don't necessarily trust what you're doing. What's for free? Mm -hmm. If it's for yeah, free, right. there's something attached. Sure. And what we said is, we're not questioning whether you need the meal or not. Mm -hmm. This is a place for fellowship. Mm -hmm. This is a place for a warm meal if you need it. And if you need it just for psychological reasons, sure. come on in. Right. And it really took off uh, fairly quickly. And the neat thing about it was it brought in a bunch of other churches mm -hmm. and individuals mm -hmm. that are not members of our congregation to be involved in it. And it became what we always wanted it to be, a community mm -hmm. ministry. Mm -hmm. It's housed in our building and our people are very much involved in it. But it was it was such a great ministry, and that's what we saw for this this building, yeah. uh, as well as uh, Sunday school mm -hmm. <laughs> and yeah, right. fellowship so activities. Sure, sure. And our youth group at one time we had over fifty three kids in our yeah. senior high mm -hmm. youth group, yeah. and if we hadn't had this building, I Good probably time. would yeah. have gone yeah. out one night yeah. and just disappeared into the sunset, and you wouldn't have seen me again because no, right. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I couldn't. If we didn't have this building, I couldn't. <laughs> we couldn't have handled yeah. fifty three people. Yeah. And now you think about manna and. There's, it's open 12 times a month, you know, right. 12 days a month. Uh -huh. And sometimes we'll have up to 150 people right. coming now. Right. We happen to do the Chick-fil-A day, so uh -huh. we have it easier than some of the other groups. Right. But they bring 150 sandwiches, I know. and we go through every one of them. Oh, I always came over on Chick-fil-A day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Now we have to be careful who we offer sandwiches <laughs> right. to. As far as the, the um, money was concerned, uh -huh. How else then, what else did we have to do to pay for it? Because we didn't want to be in debt forever. Okay. Well, what we did uh, is we, we, I said, we raised significant amount yeah, of money right. to start. So we knew that we could carry the loan. Mm -hmm. That was the, the main thing. Yeah, we knew yeah. that we were going to have to have a loan sure. to, to go after the, the initial building. But what we didn't want was to get in the trap that some churches get into is they build a building saying they will come. Mm -hmm. We were we were building this building because we needed it, and we said also before we build this building, we have to be clear that when we have the finished product, that we are not being strangled by a monthly mortgage yeah. payment, mm -hmm. and so. that was that was critical. And so, as I said before, we we had so much money in hand, and I think that was due to Gary Lee and and that mm -hmm. committee that mm -hmm. really pushed through on that. Um, we took out a loan that we were able then to to manage mm -hmm. uh, along with you know our, our ministry uh, right. budget, and then as the thing t began to take off, and it's sort of like a, a hot air balloon. As it began to fill up mm -hmm. in its ministry and in its activity in the life of the church, um, uh, that was wonderful. I do want to say that early on we realized, and we actually did not want for the lack of a better term, a sugar daddy, who mm -hmm. 
a member of the congregation who gave right. half the, the cost of the building sure. or something like that. Because we have seen churches in the past where when that happened, an in, inordinate amount of uh, influence mm -hmm. can right. be posited sure. in, a, in an individual or a family. Yeah. And so we didn't limit um, contributions or mm -hmm. what anybody wanted to pledge, but we didn't seek that giant yeah, gift. Yeah, right. What we said was, um, you know, we would love to see gifts of five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five thousand, mm -hmm. uh, if if you can afford to do that. Sure. And we had a goodly number of people uh, in the church do that. Mm -hmm. And those those pledges, we asked that they be filled in five years. Mm -hmm. And that's how we felt like we could, if we could fulfill those initial pledges right. and those mm -hmm. those groups that within that five-year period we would have enough funds to build sure. and that's exactly what happened right. at the conclusion as i th said a a after we got the loan and everything we wound up having three significant gifts the dedication was in 2003 and i think these gifts all of these gifts came in slightly after that mm -hmm. so after it was a actually dedicated okay. we had one significant gift for the kitchen and a family named uh, was was recognized in that. Right. Uh, we had another uh, gift that really just kind of went to the building fund, mm -hmm. which we use. That was right. our holding uh, Tank account money, yeah, for the right. for the building. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, I don't think anything was named after that one, but it was a sig another significant mm -hmm. gift. And finally, um, the last gift was. Um, um, and I have to say this, her name was in memory of Chris Jepson. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, right, yeah. Chris, we all miss Chris, she was wonderful, yeah. yeah. Well, you can see what Yeah, it, right, I know. It, it you can see what it memory. does sure, to me. Sure, sure, yeah. But um, that gift paid off the mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we were free and clear. Yeah. And uh, whew, that it was- Made a difference, uh, made such a significant difference, yeah. It did. Just look how this and place is growing. So, you know, within five years, uh, we decided to build. Mm -hmm. We built, and we retired the loan. Uh, and that little moment <laughs> with with my quiver lip. Yeah, right. That just that was just for all the old folks that were there when I was preaching. <laughs> <laughs> the building uh, is being used more and more, and we're excited about that. Mm -hmm. And we're going to be looking for new opportunities. Right. Uh, Mm -hmm. I don't know if you have any thoughts about that. Well, I just know that, you know, every church has a heart and soul. And, mm -hmm. they're, all, and admit they're not always the same. I mean, mm -hmm. they're, they're, and their focus isn't the same. But I know what made this church um, mm -hmm. vibrant. Mm -hmm. It was the, the, the love and the compassion that we have had for each other. Mm -hmm. It was... For uh, it was the acceptance that we've had, and I think that's always been a part of who we were because we committed ourselves to, to being a family. I think we reach out and mm -hmm. we support one another, right. and we come to the rescue uh, as soon as something comes up and we hear about it. We, that's we it. start reaching out, and I think that's been a wonderful part of this this fellowship. Well, here. I think it defines who a Christian is. Yes. I think sometimes you have to be small enough to embrace some specifics mm -hmm. and do them well rather than yeah. to be so large and just try to offer a smorgasbord of right. activity. Right. So I think that's where the church is. I think, um, you know, as Joseph grows into this ministry, mm -hmm. and, and when I say that, because I had to grow into this ministry. Sure. I mean, when I came, oh, yeah. I was 40, but I had yeah. to I had to grow into the specific ministry mm -hmm. that that is who Culpeper right. Presbyterian right. Church is. Yeah. So I think as Joseph continues to grow into that and develop that, uh, you know, with his touch and influence, uh, I think this church is going to continue to, to, to be a healthy, happy, vibrant congregation. <laughs>Good morning, Gary. Good morning, Tom. Thank you for joining us today. You're welcome. Um, you are the you were the chairman of the building committee many years ago, mm -hmm. and we just wanted to ask you a few questions as we try to remember sure. all the things that that uh, that happened back then. Okay. Um, 
What is your first memory of how the Fellowship Hall program got started? <clears throat> Again, recollection after this long, long period of time <laughs> right. is, is a little, little bit sketchy, but my recollection is that the genesis of the whole thing started primarily because of the space we were constricted to in the old, if you will, auditorium mm -hmm. downstairs mm -hmm. with the choir practices mm -hmm. and, and, and that and the use of the, uh, the kitchen. It, you know, it, it was old design, it wasn't laid out uh, ergonomically at, at the very least. Right. But the session started discussing, this is, this is after the, this lot had been purchased several years before on which the Fellowship Hall stands. Uh, Black, went, I believe it was back when Horace Alley was, was pastor of the church. And um, uh, finally, the, I guess through the session, they decided, you know, it's time that maybe we should find out if there's enough support from the congregation to consider going through a, a fundraising campaign mm -hmm. to, uh, to uh, build a fellowship hall. And so that kind of got the momentum going. Uh, the, the initial impetus really was the, was the formation of the fundraising committee. And my recollection at that point was, I believe Dr. George Broman was chairman of the fundraising committee. Um, a lot of the members of the fundraising committee eventually morphed into the building committee itself. And I believe I might have missed that meeting, meeting therefore I was elected chairman. You know, <laughs> right, that's the way it works. But, you know. no, just, but that, that's kind of the genesis of it. So besides the day of dedication, what was the most exciting piece of the construction? <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, uh, that's, a, that's a good question. The, watching him build the elevator shaft was really kind of interesting because there are very few uh, buildings in town at that time that had elevators. Okay. That was kind of, kind of interesting to see him going down deep to, to build the base for it. Um, other than that, it just went so smoothly, there's nothing particularly stands out in my mind. Uh, and it didn't other than getting the certificate of occupancy to be able to, to be you know, able to be able to move building. into it exactly. yeah, and, and open it up. Right. So with that elevator shaft and all that ground over there, were there a lot of problems with rocks or things? No, that no, good, good question. Uh, I don't recall there being much in the way of uh, rock because typically you get into blasting and that sort of thing. That wasn't that wasn't necessary. Like I say, the only real anomaly was the one back corner where there was fill from a previous. It was almost like a. Uh, construction dump site and the ground's mm -hmm. unstable so okay. they were able to fix that with gravel and maintain the okay. integrity of the ground. Okay. Yeah. Right. So we know a lot of hard work and volunteer time, including a lot of your time I'm sure, went into the project. Uh, some of the people involved are no longer with us. Mm -hmm. uh, is there anyone that you'd particularly like to recognize uh, for helping out with the project? That's well, uh, I, I believe Deanne's going to address this a little bit more, but uh, as, as far as the overall congregational support, but there, there are four or five individuals and families who I think really were the anchor to, to, to make mm -hmm. this uh, uh, project a success. Uh, first one comes to mind, uh, unfortunately, is late uh, Phyllis Martin, who just passed away mm -hmm. a few weeks yeah. ago. Mm -hmm. Um, the Jepson family, the Raymer family, uh, the Thomas family, mm -hmm. the Kings, uh, those are just names off the top of yeah, my head that right. uh, really provided the support that created the momentum for the rest of the mm -hmm. congregation to get behind them. And uh, at the end of the day, you know, for a relatively small congregation, uh, the total project cost right at $1.8 million. Mm -hmm. and to end up at the end of the day with, with no debt on that property says a lot for the congregation. Yeah, right, it surely does. Indeed. Yeah. It was an exciting time. I remember yeah. the uh, dedication day, uh, yeah. Yeah. And, yeah, and then the breaking of ground, because I remember all of our kids were small then, <laughs> yeah. and if they were out with the shovels, or they wouldn't hit one another. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no, no. But it's been a great asset, not only to the church, but the community of Culpeper yeah, itself. It really has been, and we're yeah. still growing with sure. this. Yeah, that's great. great. Do you have any other comments or thoughts about this? With our congregational support, the level of that support, and with very few problems, it, it was just uh, a relatively easy project uh -huh. to put, put together, okay. in my recollection. That's great. Well, that's yep. great.
It was my understanding that you worked um, with the building committee. You weren't actually a member of the building committee no, during this, but you worked with the building committee uh, for the commemoration plaques uh, that we have all through the fellowship hall. So could you tell me a little bit about that process, how that went? Sure. Well, the fundraising for this building was just um, incredible. Mm -hmm. I mean, we know our church always, always meets the goals. I mean, no matter mm -hmm. what it is, small mm -hmm. or large, mm -hmm. but this was unbelievable. So when the building committee um, worked with stewardships, I was on stewardship as well, um, and tried to establish some goals for families, it was just um, amazing how everyone stepped up and really mm -hmm. stretched. Mm -hmm. I mean, families really stretched to, to meet this. And I think a lot of it was because um, everyone understood we were busting at the seams mm -hmm. in our current building. We're thankful. There was a lot of conversation, I think, in session and stewardship about being so thankful about how we got where we were yeah. at that current mm -hmm. time, but also that we needed to do more. We mm -hmm. were led to do more. And so as the fundraising effort started and, and everyone established the goals, um, we didn't talk about naming or anything like that mm -hmm. at that point in time, but once the goal was met and we said that we wanted to have a dedication, um, we met and said, well, let's do some naming opportunities. And so um, the different levels um, of giving were recognized, and so we um, purchased plaques and um, tried to honor those mm -hmm. who had committed to the long-term future yeah. growth of our church. Um, so that's where we were with that. Okay. And so we have classrooms, but we also have other parts of the building that were named as well. Okay. Um, and did the donors have an opportunity to participate in the process as far as what they wanted or what kind of plaque they wanted or where they wanted it? Or they what? did. They did. Um, we reached out to all the families. Um, some did in honor, some did in memory, some did mm -hmm. to the glory of God. Um, and so we, we honored what they wanted on the plaque mm -hmm. um, itself. And you'll notice as soon as you enter the fellowship hall um, building, there is a plaque that, that honors the past, present, and future mm -hmm. you know, congregation mm -hmm. of this church. Because truly, that's, that's what it's about. Sure. Is, you know, yeah. we, we got here due to folks giving mm -hmm. and supporting mm -hmm. and sacrificing for us. Right. But we have um, legacies that we want to honor. And sure. you know, as I've spent time walking through this building, it's, it's really heartfelt to see those who participated in this 20 years ago who are no longer with us. Yeah. But their legacy is here. Sure. And so I'm so grateful that we did that, that we can mm -hmm. honor them and, yeah. and remember sure. how they participated, not only just with financial, but time, talent, gifts, mm -hmm. um, all sorts of things. The love for the church. The love for the yeah, church. Yeah, yeah. And wanting to do for the future generations. Sure. Yeah. I mean, it really was, there was such a strong right. commitment for that right. um, during that time. Um, in 2003, when the building was dedicated, you were the Sunday school superintendent. So you were an active lady. You were involved in a lot of things going on here. Mm -hmm. What changes did you experience in the Sunday school classes at that time? And was there an air of excitement? And I know what the answer to that question is. <laughs> That's an understatement. <laughs> yeah. You know, when I think back, um, our building, for those who weren't here at that point in time, we truly were busting at the seams. Mm -hmm. The pastor's office, current pastor's office, is where I taught kindergarten and first grade. Okay. The handbell um, room was two classrooms. Okay. The library was a classroom. The choir room was our fellowship hall. And I know you can remember yeah, when yeah. we had youth group activities sure. and we had spaghetti dinners and you had to have times to come because we couldn't fit everybody. Right, yeah. So you had a six o'clock mm -hmm. or a seven o'clock mm -hmm. time frame. And so when we got over here, exuberance, yeah. um, we had space. We had one precept adult class when we were in the other building. We offered three adult classes. Mm -hmm. So not only were we trying to educate our children, but give the adults opportunities. Sure. Mm -hmm. Our youth group, could be kids in this building. And you know, I think back on, on some of the fun things, the activities, and I can still see the boys kicking the kickballs up and hitting the ceiling, yeah. and Wayne going, stop! <laughs> <laughs> but it gave them joy. Yeah. Um, right. There was so much joy mm -hmm. in this building. Right. Um, you know, the other thing I remember is 
in the other building, the attic. Mm-hmm. Think of the classrooms we had in the attic. It was, you know, kind of dark and dingy yeah, right. and whatnot and youth group. And so to come over here and, and be able to grow yeah, was right. a wonderful opportunity for this. But, group. you know, we saved over there in those walls upstairs when the kids were we were upstairs in Sunday school. You know, I had both of our boys' names, they written their name on the wall yes. up there. When we go up to get the Christmas decorations down, it's always fun it's to always see their names memories. and have memories. Yeah, well, I think that. that's the thing. There's a season for everything. And that building still serves our purpose. Mm-hmm. But this building enables us to be true disciples, not only for our congregants, but for our community. Yeah. And mm-hmm. so, and, and we built it not just for that moment, mm-hmm. but here 20 years later, you yeah. know, we're still growing. Yeah. No, and even with COVID, even when we really couldn't be open, Mm -hmm. we still served. Yeah. So this building still was serving, even though it was kind of closed. During the rough time, that's right. Yeah. So um, what were your favorite memories of the dedication or groundbreaking of this hall? When I think of the of the groundbreaking, I can still see Nancy Broman and, Mm -hmm. and the building committee with their shovels and getting ready to break ground. Before that, this property was used for an Easter egg hunt mm-hmm. for the mm-hmm. Sunday school classes. Right. And so that was significant. That sticks in my mind mm-hmm. that I can still remember standing at the street corner and watching that process. Uh-huh. Yeah. And the dedication when Carson Ryan came mm-hmm. and he did the service, I still hear him saying, I hope you have to paint this building all the time uh-huh. because uh-huh. of the use. Yeah. And we have built, yeah. you know, painted it many times. And I can remember Larry King being in the, yeah, the sure. hall here saying, I don't like that color. Yeah, right. <laughs> that's right. But Good Barbara and I said, we're doing it. That's right. Too bad. <laughs> um, but, you know, and that's something that there were people who have always, it isn't just about money, it's about mm-hmm. um, participation. Sure. And, and it takes a whole community to, to make things thrive. Mm-hmm. And um, what a blessing we have. Yeah. this building what a plus. it's been quite a journey and I just can't even believe it's been 20 years mm-hmm. it is hard and I think about you know in 20 years what this building will be doing sure it's it's it'll be incredible yeah. I can't wait to see what else we do yeah when I think uh-huh. of discipleship and our mission right um, I just want us to keep growing yeah. I want us exactly. to be thinking about the future generations that it isn't just about yeah. us That's it's right. not about us so we have to think ahead we to go and on. Um, yeah. you know it's a session and and we move forward in our all of our strategic goals to be looking ahead and always be growing. Great, that's great. Good morning, Gay. Good morning. Thank you for coming down and uh, to sit with us for a few minutes. Uh, We wanted to chat with you about your involvement on the building committee now 20 plus years ago. Amazing. Um, (laughs) And we uh, have some questions we'd like to ask you. Um, The first one was thinking about the new space compared to the existing kitchen and social hall, which was tiny, uh, in the sanctuary building and you being part of congregational care, what was the committee's plan for the new building? Do you remember back then, uh, and it had to be an exciting time when you knew we were going to have more space? I was thinking about that old space (laughs) and how many times we wash dishes pregnant with little kids in that space the water went cold on us every time it wasn't just me we still have a lot of people that that did mm-hmm. did those dinners and um, we organized a lot of dinners and it was so hard to even get around for people to even do anything sure. so I was looking forward to a new kitchen because mm-hmm. I was mainly involved in that I did lunch bunch then back then okay. and um, it was just great to have that big, beautiful kitchen. And then, of course, we had a lot of kids in our church then. And so I was thinking about, for the kids, what a space. Mm-hmm. I mean, and primarily we were thinking basketball, um, broom hockey, just lots of things for the kids. Sure. So we don't have as many kids now, but we have a lot of great programs. Yeah, so. we do, we do. So it was an exciting time. It was so was. exciting. Yeah. So exciting, just watching it go. Right. We had some pro, uh, some meeting down there not too long. I think it was somebody's funeral reception in that room. You walked in the room and said, how did we ever manage, manage. that room all I don't years? think we had funeral receptions back then. I don't know that we did. I really I don't. don't. I don't think there was space no, for it. No, but now it's, it's nice that, that we can do something like that. Yeah, so. I, think, I think people really appreciate that. Mm-hmm. So um, do you think that 
that anyone, any of us, realized the potential that this building uh, had back then and what it would become now 20 years later. I don't. Yeah. I don't. I, I don't. I yeah. thought it would be mainly our church mm -hmm. using it. And now look at look at us with manna, young lives, mm -hmm. young life, mm -hmm. uh, sunrise. Um, just there are just so many great programs down there. Sure. And you mentioned the funeral right. um, receptions. Um, we really are a community church, mm -hmm. and we proved it with with our new right. building. Right. And just having our Sunday morning uh, coffee, coffee hour. hour. Yeah, you know, it's been nice just to get people together because you really couldn't do that. No, very well no, no, we not had. at all. Uh, but I don't know that we realized all. We that, didn't we? realize it at yeah. the time mm -hmm. what we were missing. Right. Um, so, do you believe there is still growth potential for this space? And do you have any idea of what activities you think maybe we need to think about in the future? Well, oh, I think there's always potential for growth mm -hmm. with programs. Yeah. What I'd love to see is younger folks come in, even mm -hmm. if it's for volleyball or just to get them back in the church. And mm -hmm. maybe they would end up joining our church sure. or joining another church. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter just to get them back in right. the fold. I would really like to see us push that somehow. Yeah, we do need to get some younger people. I think that's a goal that many of us have yeah. is to try to get some younger. But even with Sunrise Saturdays, uh, you know, we're getting some newer kids coming in that really aren't members of this church and hopefully their families may yeah. decide may to eventually join, you know, join. if they bring their yeah. kids for that, that Saturday. Uh, and I know that's been, been a good program. Uh, any other visions you have for the, the church right now? I can't think, like you say, young people yeah. and just keeping that idea of being a community church, mm -hmm. not right. just us, but being a community right. church, I think this reaching been, out. Yeah, so important over here for us to have this. And when we think back all the years ago and uh, the trying to raise the money and worried that were we ever going to make, make it? it, and then we did. Uh, and paid it off in really an amazing amount I know. of time. Amazing. Yeah. Uh -huh. So it was good. Thank you. We are grateful to Gary, Wayne, Deanne, and Gay for taking the time to reminisce about the Fellowship Hall that has become such an important part of our church life and this community. We thank God for his love and guidance that helped us open these doors. several things. As I mentioned different uh, groups, please stand. Sunday school teachers, anybody that's taught Sunday school in this building, please stand. <laughs> Mana volunteers, we now have Mana three days away. Everybody keep standing as well. Once you're up, please just remain standing. So Mana, and I think Betsy's here, who's, uh, where is Betsy? There she is. Mana. Uh, Sunrise Saturdays, if you've been a volunteer for Sunrise Saturdays, please stand and remain standing. Young life and young lives. I'm not sure any of the leaders are here, but if they are, please stand there. Thank you. Uh, drama presentations. Our actors, our directors, our helpers. Uh, all the presentations that we have, but they stand. Social gatherings and recent cornhole tournament. All those that attended. And attended other events. Uh, so you can see how much this building is being used. And most of you have been involved in this for, for a number of years. So it was a great project, and uh, we're grateful for the people that spoke, uh, and Wayne particularly, to come back and tell us about all this. Uh, and uh, uh, what I want to do now is just for a moment thank uh, two people, Barb and Tammy. Uh, wow. They, Barb, She put most of this together, and of course, Tammy, you can see, has done the videos, has got the pictures together. So we're very grateful for them. I'm going to ask them both of them to come down to the bottom of the stage. From the congregation. We <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs> We told you no sandbag. Right, no sandbag. <laughs> we thank you all for this, and we thank you for what you do every day for this church.
Thank you. Thank you. Pastor Joseph, I turned it over to you. He's behind. Oh, there. <laughs> I'm going to invite you to rise in body or in spirit as we join together in the litany of thanksgiving, which is on the reverse side of the paper that's there at your spot. With praise and thanksgiving, let us pray to God, through whom all things are accomplished. Eternal God and creator of all things, we give you high praise for the good work you do among us. We give you thanks, O Lord. For our baptism in faith, for your forgiveness of sins, for the founding of our church, and for its sustaining by your gracious hand. We give you thanks, O Lord. For the unity of the Holy Spirit, for the saving work of your Son, Jesus our Lord, in whose name you give us our mission. We give you thanks, O Lord. For bringing our labors to completion and bringing our mission to fruition for our fellowship hall, which we rededicate to your glory. We give you thanks, O Lord. For those who contributed their knowledge and gifts and those who contributed their sweat and labor. We give you thanks, O Lord. For those who prayed for this great gift, but who have taken for those who have prayed for this great gift, but who have been taken into your heavenly care before seeing it accomplished. We give you thanks, O Lord. Grant by your grace that all who enter in this place may know the blessings of your Son, Jesus Christ. Hear our prayer. Grant that those who use this building may deepen their participation in discipleship to Christ. Hear our prayer. Grant that strangers and sojourners may feel a sense of welcome here in the Lord. Hear our prayer. May faith abide in this place. In the name of the Father. May love abound in this place. In the name of the Son. And may your presence be known in this place. In the name of the Holy Spirit. Continue to use this building for your holy purpose, O God. Use us as living stones to do your will. Holy God, mighty Lord, you bless us in so many ways with your gifts, and especially with the gift of this building. May its use bring all honor and glory to you and advance your kingdom and advance the kingdom of your Son, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Uh, as far as serving of the meal, you may be seated. As far as serving of the meals goes, I believe we're going to start at this table and go through the line, and we'll go in stages so that there's not a swarm. The food looks amazing. Uh, and I can't smell it from here because allergies. But it looks amazing and it will be delicious. Uh, and now I invite you to receive the benediction which will also serve as a blessing of the meal. Now to him who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than we can ask or even imagine. To him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Amen.